Throughout his youth, Tom couldn't help but notice how different he was to most villagers. While they all spent most of their days gossiping by the village fountain, he would defend the village from monsters with the help of Siti the Golem, as well as take care of animals, go mining, refurbish houses, and above all, eat. Why was he the only one to eat? One very hot day, a horde of pillagers wanted to take over the village. All the villagers started panicking, running around right to left, trying to find a place to hide. But Tom stood still. With all the skills he had mastered, he decided that he would stand guard and defend his village. Siti was a great help too. She was very brave and very powerful, so the pillagers didn't stand a chance against her. The enemy was vanquished, and slowly, all the villagers crept out of their hiding place. Then suddenly, there was an uproar. The villagers sent fireworks in the air, congratulating their heroes. And believe me, from that point on, no one gossiped about Tom ever again. The simple-minded will always gossip, but don't ever let that prevent you from stepping up and being yourself. I hope you're all doing great and staying safe. Welcome to 100 Days as a Villager. In this 100 days, I've set myself a few goals. Number one, being a villager, of course, I will have to live in a village, but do not worry, I'm not going to spend the 100 days in the village. I will be, of course, allowed to explore the area, but my main base will have to be in that village. Number two, I will have to upgrade an entire village. I will have to rebuild every single house. Number three, I will have to defend my village from a raid. And of course, defeat the Ender Dragon. By the way, if you enjoy these 100 day videos as a Minecraft mob, you could check out 100 days as a strider. If some of you want to know how to download the mods for this video, there is actually a tutorial on my Instagram at Tootsie YouTube. I actually post some tutorials on Instagram just to help you out. I do not win anything from it. So if you're interested, you can check them out. Let's dive into it. On day one, I spawned in this rustic little village. A benevolent weaponsmith offered me an axe against a few emeralds. This was a well-needed weapon for the dangers that lay ahead. I came across a couple of pigs, so I gave them a potato each. I spent the rest of the day collecting some hay and wood, and when the night came, I had to borrow a house from a kind villager who wasn't very happy about me pushing him out of his bed. On day two, I met this very friendly spider named Anya, and she showed me where to get a bit of iron. Buried in the desert sand was a temple. I carefully made my way to the treasure, being wary of the trap. Being only on day two, I was not fussy. I took everything from enchanted books to string. Having found a saddle, I decided to tame a horse. I named my horse Priya, which is an Indian name that means beloved. After making her an enclosure, Priya and I decided that we would go out and explore the area. We discovered a savanna, a swamp, and a plains biome. And then my arch enemies lay before me, the pillagers. On day four, I realized that it was high time to start getting some cows over. I found a suitable area and I started terraforming to flatten out the area and then I made an enclosure. When I set out to find some cows, I came upon an abandoned portal. By the way, more and more villagers were starting to get trapped in the pig enclosure. In the tall grass of the plains, I found my first cow and I brought her back to the enclosure. I now had to find her a mate, so I set back out into the forest and guess what? I found a desert village in a forest biome. It was the first time I've ever seen that. It was quite funny. I finally found a second cow and brought her back to her girlfriend so that they could have babies. 
Time to go mining now. So I went into the cleric's house. I don't know why I chose his house. I'm really sorry. And I started making my mine. Hidden in the depths of a ravine was a mine shaft. I was struck by an arrow and propelled into the void. A feisty stack of bones was trying to end my journey, but I did not let him. Enjoying the wonders of a waterfall was an endearing axolotl. Having no bucket on me, I went to smelt some iron, but when I came back, the axolotl had vanished. I excavated some gold nuggets from the rock wall, and when I turned around, a creeper jumped out of nowhere. Once again, the waterfall protected me from another monster because these feeble creatures couldn't swim against the current. I ventured further down into the mineshaft and to my surprise and glee, wear some diamonds. And then my recording software stopped. So in that time, I found an axolotl and a few diamonds, but this actually motivated me to mine even longer, to find even more diamonds while I was filming. As you've just seen, I actually did the lapis lazuli technique that I had talked of in my five ways to find diamonds video. At one point, it was super funny. So basically, I found these diamonds by mining um, in a straight line. And then I found this cave, so I decided to explore it. And I found some lapis, so I was like, oh yes, more diamonds. And guess what? I'd already mined the diamonds that were near the lapis lazuli. On day nine, I came back up to the surface and I did a bit of farming. I fed my animals and realized that more and more villagers were getting stuck in the enclosure. And then I decided I would do some huge wheat fields. On day 10, I knew that I needed a lot of wood. So I went to a dark oak forest not far from the village to collect as much dark oak as possible. I enjoyed the peaceful rain while I was building some ramparts to protect my village. I used a combination of oak wood and dark oak wood because I thought it would look nicer than only one wood um, because it would give more texture. And honestly, I didn't know it would take so long to um, make this wall all around my village because I had to get some more wood and trust me, the village was really quite big. I was making this wall not only to protect my villagers from monsters, but also from the raid. By day 15, I'd finally finished and I decided to make the cow pen a bit larger and a bit nicer. The pig enclosure population was growing, but not only with pigs, with loads of villagers, they were just all getting stuck in there for some reason. At the end of the day, I started planting some crops for my wheat field. I then spent the next few days making a wall around the field, and then I decided it was time to upgrade the first house of the village. I thought that this house looked a bit like a church, so I was going to make the design based a bit on that, so with a tower and a kind of lower house behind. I started off by demolishing it and then I made a kind of circular tower base. So if you've been watching my videos for some time now, I think you will recognize this design because I really, really love making my towers like this. As you've probably guessed, the theme for this village would be medieval and rustic because I think if I had made it modern, it would have looked a bit strange. Of course, throughout this video, if there are any builds that you like, you can of course tell me in the comments and I might do a tutorial video on them. By the way, next week I will be posting the tutorial for the starter house of the hardcore snowy let's play because a lot of you have been asking for it. As you can see, I am collecting some obsidian and why you may ask. That is because I'm transforming this tiny house on the hill into a sort of house gazebo where my nether portal will be. I've realized that very often I don't decorate the nether portal like at all. I just do the basic frame and that's it. But there I thought why not incorporate it in a build. So I started making a slightly elevated circular platform and look at how my villager sleeps. A bit strange. <laughs> 
Time for a few facts on villages. So according to the lead creative designer at Mojang, villagers were actually supposed to increase in population if the player made improvements and additions to the town. Unfortunately, the developers found that it was hard to define what constitutes a house, so the idea was left behind, but there probably exists some mods that can do that because honestly now there's mods for anything. Villagers were originally inspired by the shopkeepers from a game called Dungeon Master 2. A third fact is that some village houses can actually spawn with grand columns under them. So for example, if they're on the side of a cliff, the house will actually extend all the way and it will just look like a weird column. Another fact is that sometimes a lonely village can spawn where there's actually only one villager and only one house. Once the portal was done, I made myself some diamond armor and I entered the nether. Of course, I'd forgotten to take some gold armor and I had some issues with a piglin, so I went back out and then back in and finally I could start mining some quartz for XP and also fighting a few endermen. On day 33, I decided On day 33, I decided I would upgrade my second house of this village. So, of course, I did a bit of terraforming to make the area nice and flat and I started building. So, I used some stone, some dark oak and some oak. As I was getting some clay to make some white terracotta, I thought, well, I might just get some diamonds too. I didn't mind them straight away though because I wanted to get a fortune pickaxe first. By day 38, my cow population had grown a lot and I had enough sugarcane to make some bookshelves. My first enchantment was not fortune 3, but it was silk touch, which meant that I could now pick up the diamonds and when I'll get fortune 3, I'll be able to mine them. The next few days, I decided I would upgrade one of the builds that excited me the most, which was the forge. What I liked about this build was that there was a house area, but also the forge area, and I thought, yeah, it could look quite cute. As you've noticed, I use the replay mod a lot in this video, so if you'd like a tutorial on how to download it, I actually made one on my Instagram. I then decided to make an entrance gate to my village because there was still a gap at the entrance. So yeah, that wouldn't be very smart to have a hole in the village wall when the pillagers come by. As my village is a little bit medieval themed, well not just a little bit, I decided to make a kind of castle-y entrance. And I've been asked quite a bit if I prefer building cottages or castles and honestly I like them both and I might do a castle tutorial at one point on this channel. That night I went to kill off a few skeletons because I needed some white dye because I wanted to make part of the house out of white concrete. And you can only get white dye from bone meal or lilies of the valley. With some white concrete in hand, I was finally able to finish the exterior of the house. On day 49, I returned to the nether to get some lava for the forge and I almost died. I don't know how I managed to do that, <laughs> but yeah, I got enough lava for making um, the lava pit, you know, in the forge. For the forge decoration, I used, of course, some furnaces and I put some sheets, you know, some weighted pressure plates, which really looked like metal that you could hit on in the forge to make some weapons. Of course, I didn't forget the lighting and above all, I put loads of bushes, you know me. <laughs> and then on day 50, I went to get the diamonds because I now had silk touch. I then decided to go over to the swamp to get some clay, no I'm joking, it was to get some diamonds. And guess what? I did not find one diamond. And at one point I fell into this cave and that creeper almost killed me. <laughs> so I mean, no diamonds, 
almost dying. What was happening? So I probably got something wrong. I'm not sure what, but I went home without any diamonds. And what does Tootsie do when she cannot find diamonds? She looks even more for diamonds. <laughs> This time I did it the good old way by strip mining. So my technique was in a straight line and every two blocks I would mine on each side. Catastrophe struck when I walked straight into lava. So yeah, that was quite scary, but I got out in the end and I didn't die. Phew. With my efficiency for pickaxe, I continued mining and guess what? I found some diamonds. And then I found some lapis. So I knew that also meant that I could find some diamonds. And then I heard a little axolotl chirping. So I went to get some water and I picked him up. I mean her. And by the way, I named her Kaya. On day 55, I put Kaya in with Goldie so that they could keep each other company. At first, I thought the chunk hadn't fully loaded, but I realized that the whole roof of my forge had burnt down. Great, so basically, lava can go through iron bars, so I put some glass instead to be sure it doesn't happen again. As I hadn't found a monster spawner, I had to get XP the hard way by mining loads of quartz. So I used silk touch like that. I would just have to pile up with all the quartz blocks and then mine them to get the XP. So it was long, it was boring, but I mean, even a monster spawner can be quite boring when you're just, you know, hitting them and then AFK and then hitting them. So yeah, it didn't change much. A few years back, when I would play on servers, I remember there was always someone building his house only out of diamonds and it was super funny so that's kind of what I did but for me it was only to actually get the diamonds because I now had fortune 3 and of course I had to flex my diamonds. <laughs> On day 57 I had to rebuild the whole roof of the forge <laughs> a second time but I mean hopefully this time it wouldn't burn down once again. To make this village even more medieval, I decided to transform this house into a kind of fort. So it would be made entirely out of stone and would have that sort of little castle-y like um, design. By the way, tell me in the comments if you enjoy the sort of time lapses I do with the replay mod or if you'd rather I just show a bit of building. As one of my goals was to completely transform the village, I thought it would be more interesting for you if you actually saw me building like the entire builds. Maybe it would make it more interesting, I don't know. So I really hope you enjoy it. I know that personally, I love time lapses. I find them really satisfying. So I really hope it does the same effect on you. Most of you probably know that castles often have like little holes where the soldiers would shoot arrows from, which are called arrow slits. But in French, they are called meurtrières. Another interesting thing is that the dungeons in French are called donjons, but they are also called oubliettes. And the first part of the word oubliette, oubli, is actually forget, forgetting. So the French word really shows how once you're in the dungeon, you will be forgotten forever. If you're new to this channel and you're like, why is she saying facts? Why can't she just talk about the 100 days? It's because I love teaching things to people. And I mean, yeah, it's just a Minecraft video, but I mean, why not just teach my viewers some things? I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. And honestly, I actually really hope that some of you enjoy the teaching and learning. Because two things I love about making YouTube videos is first of all, the little stories I do at the start of the video. I really love making them. And also the teaching. I just, I don't know, I enjoy it. So I hope you enjoy it too. During the next few days, I decided I would upgrade 
this little house hidden in the trees and I would actually transform it into a horse stable. So, of course, I took my horse and we went over to the dark oak forest so that I could get loads of wood. At first, I wanted to do a house, but then I thought the enclosure I made for Anya is just not nice. And also, if I made a nice horse stable, it would, of course, be something a bit different in the village and also I could adopt loads of friends for Anya. I wanted to make the stable large enough for at least four horses. All the materials I used were easy to come by so the dark oak but of course if you are doing this stable in your world and you don't have a dark oak forest no worries, you can easily use spruce or oak. They would both look really nice. I also used some stone bricks. Um, I thought they would look a bit nicer than cobblestone. It would look a bit like the floor is tiled. I am now going to let you enjoy the building for a bit. Once the stables were finished, I decorated a bit with some bushes and I bought Anya over and then I got a brown horse that I named Alessandro and a white one called Paco. On day 66, I found a black horse that I named Dewi, which means goddess in Indonesian. Dewi was definitely magical because she helped me find a temple and guess what was in the chest? Two diamonds so yeah that was that was pretty cool after this exciting morning i decided to head over to the nether to first of all get as much quartz as possible to be able to enchant i was also hoping that i would find the nether fortress so that i would be able to make some potions i also killed off quite a few endermen to get some ender pearls and finally there it was, the nether fortress. I made a bridge out of cobblestone and I carefully made my way up. I first came across some blazes, but there were only two, so it wasn't too difficult to kill them. After looting a few chests, I found this magma cube and I killed him just to be safe. And then I got loads of nether warts. I don't know why, but I find this moment super funny. Like basically this wither skeleton just walked past me. So I ran super quick and thankfully I managed to outrun him. Finally, I found a blaze spawner and I started killing off all the blazes. In my last 100 days, I was a strider, which meant I was fire resistant and wasn't scared of blazes. And now it all changed a little. Well, I wouldn't say I was too scared, but I was more careful. When I had collected enough blaze rods, I decided to make my way home. And on my way, of course, I killed off plenty of endermen so that I would get enough ender pearls for the ender dragon fight. The trick to kill endermen safely is to just dig out a two block high hole in the wall and you'll be just fine. And by the way, see these blue mushrooms that grow in the warped forests? Well, they are lifesavers when you're walking through a crimson forest because they will protect you of hoglins if you place them on the ground. I wanted to do the raid soon, but I still didn't get infinity on my bow, so I thought maybe I should try and trade with a librarian. If you know that I often mix up cleric and librarian, it means you've been watching my videos for a long time and thank you so, so much. As you can see right here, I was piling up quartz blocks and then mining them once again for enchants. 
My goal was to get protection 4 on most of my armor. I decided to name Kaya in an anvil, but sadly, Goldie was nowhere to be seen, so I expect he suffocated somehow. I finally was able to put Infinity on my bow, and this meant the raid is coming soon. I did get a few recording issues, but basically I got a cat and I didn't do much more. I started building the house, but that was it, so you didn't miss much, don't worry. And I named the cat Connor, which is an Irish name. Hidden behind the day's writing is actually written recording, because I was actually recording this on replay mod, but the house I was making looked horrible because I used stripped oak and then I changed it to white concrete and it looked much better. Days 84 to 85, the tension was rising and it was time to get all my villagers safe into their houses. I also lit up as much of the village as possible so that no mobs could come and attack the villagers while the raid was happening. I was wondering why so many villagers seemed to be missing and guess where they were in the cow pen. <laughs> there was even a golem there for some reason. So I covered everything up and then I realized that the golem couldn't fit so I made a small area where the golem could fit and um, defend the villagers just in case. Days 86 to 89 was raid time. Well. Not quite as you would expect, it was actually me raiding the pillagers. So I am in hardcore, meaning that the raids are pretty difficult, but I don't know why, I thought, why not do a level 3 raid? Yeah, I don't know why, so I killed off 3 pillagers with a banner. The village was now doomed, and I had to defend it. But quickly, something happened that I was not expecting. I could not find the last raider. This was quite a big issue because raids expire after a certain amount of ticks, so I had to be quick. I searched every single cave around my village and finally I found him. But a lot of time had passed. The next wave, however, was completely extermined by the golems. Once again, I had problems finding the last raider, but I thought, logically, it might be in the same cave. So I went back down and once again found him. The next wave was going super well, I was having lots of fun shooting at the intruders and suddenly the raid bar disappeared, which means that the raid had expired and I had to start everything all over again. I mounted Anya's back and once again we galloped towards the pillager outpost. Once again, I was determined to do a raid that was level 3 and I think that was my downfall because this adds more weight and basically takes longer and if I keep struggling, you know, just to find the remaining raider, it would just be impossible for me to finish it before it expires. At one point, the pillagers actually spawned inside the village, but thankfully, all the golems helped out. And now the mob I dreaded the most arrived, the evoker. I had to be brave and I shot at it and yes, killed him. And this meant I now had a totem of them dying for the ender dragon fight. And now the issue came again. 
So this time I made a potion of night vision so that I could see better in caves. So I looked everywhere to find the remaining raider and nothing, nothing at all. I even asked this golem and he told me he had no clue where they were. So this was a catastrophe. I decided that from now on, I wouldn't sleep the nights to be able to kill off a few phantoms to make slow falling potion. Even with all the torches I placed, mobs still managed to spawn, so I tried putting some glowstone everywhere throughout the village. The next few days, I decided I would do my farming area a little bit larger. The real reason I did that was because I thought it would look nice in the thumbnail, but as you've seen, we cannot even see the wheat fields in the thumbnail, so <laughs> that was a bit useless. When the night came, I galloped back to the pillager outpost, hopefully for the last time. And this time I decided to only kill one pillager with the banner, you know, like that the raid would be shorter and there's more chances I'll actually finish it. As it was an easier raid, I decided to let all my villagers out to make it more challenging so that I had to actually protect the villagers at the same time. Due to the large amount of mobs in the area, plus the antique computer that I have <laughs> that struggles with, you know, lags and everything, I decided it was wiser to remove the shaders. And for those of you who don't actually play with a shader, this gives you an opportunity to see the builds how they truly are. I don't know why, but I thought that moment when I was hitting the Ravager further and further, I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> and then it was Doomsday. I wasn't quick enough to kill the Evoker and it sent so many Vexes on me. It was terrifying, I just couldn't hide from them. As I hadn't killed the Evoker, he was summoning more and more Vexes and it was terrifying so I ran over to my golems so that they would protect me. I managed to hit him from super far but he saw me and sent more Vexes at me. I knew that I couldn't do this wave alone. I needed the golems to help me. Maybe if I was in survival I would have done everything myself but in hardcore I mean I just can't chance it. I can't end the video now so I first of all went next to my golems so that they could help me kill off the vexes and then I made a staircase so that the golems could actually go out and try and kill a few of the attackers not all of them but you know just a few because there I was going to die okay I'm not a pro look at five vexes on me this is too scary once my golems had killed off a few attackers I killed off a Vindicator and finally I killed the Invoker. Before dying he managed to summon two Vexes and oh my I was scared. Look at me the mouse is going crazy. I was so freaked out I swear I could feel the adrenaline and stress in me. <laughs> but yeah somehow I survived and I killed the remaining raiders. All was left was this Ravager so I shot at him and it was finally over. I'd finally finished a raid after three tries. But the villagers were delighted and were celebrating the amazing works of the golems and a little bit mine. <laughs> On this victorious night, the phantoms spawned. Even without the looting enchantment, I got two phantom membranes. So, I was now the hero of the village, well, one of the heroes, because, you know, the golems did quite a bit of work. But I had to make the most of it, and what I wanted is a protection for enchanted book, because my helmet actually broke, so I didn't have any enchantments on it. Sadly, I didn't get it, but I got power 5 for my bow. It was now time to find the end portal. I don't know why, but I decided to do something that people would do about 100, 200 years ago, which was changing horses. Basically, to not tire out a horse, they would leave them at a stable and take another horse. On day 99, I finally found the stronghold. 
At one point, I heard this zombie breaking down a door and honestly, it's terrifying. Even though I knew it was just a zombie, it was super scary. Day 100, it was time to round up my courage and jump into the portal. All that just to get this horrible lag of falling. I got it in the axolotl video. I hate it. Why does it do that? I managed to destroy a few crystals without too much difficulty and then I decided to climb up a tower to get the higher ones and when I reached the top I realized that I had already extinguished it <laughs> but it wasn't a big deal because I was able to extinguish some that were really high but on the opposite side. I usually manage to destroy the crystals in the cage from the bottom but there I couldn't. I tried both, I just couldn't. So I made my way up a few times, broke the bars, and then destroyed it from the bottom. I have done the Ender Dragon quite a few times now, but I felt like this time especially, she was really angry with me, like she was just hitting me all the time. But honestly, quite understandably, because I was indeed trying to put an end to her. I have never smacked the dragon so hard in the face before, but it was actually because she didn't come down very long and she kept hitting me, so yeah, it was really quite tricky, so I just, you know, took my chances and hit her whenever it was possible. Finally, it was all over and I had achieved all my goals. I had lived in the village, upgraded every single house in it, defeated a raid and defeated the ender dragon. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'm really, really hoping you enjoyed the video. Love you guys. One diamond. And at one point I found, I found, and the first part of the world, my goal was to get protection four on most of my, my goal was to get protection four on most of my armor. Why not do a level, tr because raids expire after a certain, in this 100 days, I have set myself...